Hey everyone, I hope that you had a great Easter weekend, this last weekend, and that you have a great day today as you get into God's Word with me. I'll be looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 9 today in our IBC 260 reading plan, and I really love this passage, and I hope that it'll encourage you as well. I have to tell you something, we have a, a bird's nest on, in our, on our porch, so if you look behind me over here um, to my right, you, can, you might be able to see it, and you might be able to see the mama bird actually sitting on her her little uh, little baby birds and uh, it's kind of interesting we've been kind of watching the process of how they do things and what will happen is that mama bird will sit there for a little while and then the daddy bird will come and he'll have something in his mouth every time he comes he has a worm or something in his mouth to feed and so the mama bird will leave the daddy bird will give the, the baby bird the the worm and then they'll do the process all over again and um, I just thought, it just reminded me of what Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount that we've been reading as well. And uh, just consider the birds of the air, how they don't, they don't try to store up in barns. They don't try to, try to stress out over what they're going to eat and stuff. But they just know that God's going to provide for them. And so we shouldn't worry as well. And, and so, but that brings me to today's text of where, where Paul is in his life. Because basically he's telling this church in Corinth, he's saying, guys, y'all should be providing for me. Um, the church of Corinth should be taking up offerings, providing for me as I'm preaching. I'm trying to share God's word and, and do all these things, but, but you're not. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to just trust that the Lord's going to provide. And I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to trust that God's going to provide for me what I need to eat, where I'm going to stay, all those things. And I'm just going to keep my focus on the gospel. That's what's important to me of utmost importance. I'm not going to try to get stressed out over all these temporary things that, that I feel like that I need, but I'm going to focus fully on the eternal gospel of Jesus Christ. In fact, in, in verse 22, I mean, he goes so far to say that I'm going to, I'll do whatever it takes to, uh, to get the gospel out to whoever might need it. He said, to the weak, I became weak in order to win the weak. I have become all things to all people so that I may in every way possible save some. Now I do all of this because of the gospel, so that I may share in its blessings. So I'll do whatever I need to take, I'll take whatever approach I need to do to get to people and whatever technology I need to use to get the gospel out to the people that desperately need it and the situation that they're in. This is the message of hope that means the whole world. This is my life, the gospel message. And so that, he says, that will be my truest reward and blessing. Nothing on earth, this earth could ever compare to the gospel message of Jesus Christ. So I want you to think about the gospel. I want you to think about maybe whenever you received the gospel for the very first time, when you realized that you were a sinner, like all of us are sinners, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And you knew that the wages of that sin is death. Maybe you could feel it in your own life the death of sin working itself out in your life and what that felt like and what that looked like in your life. It says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord and how he came and instead of, uh, instead of rejecting us as sinners, he stood in the gap for us. He died for us, offering us this wonderful gift of salvation through Jesus Christ our Savior when he died on the cross for us. But God demonstrated his love for us that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. And he showed us that he is the way, the truth, and the life that no one can come to the Father but through him. This wonderful gospel message that you were once dead, but now you are alive. Just like Jesus Christ was died on the cross, but he was resurrected to a new life. And so we can live in that today. We know that the gospel is true. We've seen it work itself out in our own life. And Paul says... That is my main focus in my life. In fact, in verse, in verse 26, he says, I do not run like one who runs aimlessly or box like one beating the air. Instead, I discipline my body and bring it under strict control so that after preaching to others, I myself will not be disqualified. He says, guys, this is everything to me. And maybe it seems like that you are beating the air right now. Where there's no routine anymore. There's no schedules. Maybe for you, it's just like, this seems worthless to me. I'm just beating the air. He says, guys, no, no, no. Focus again on the gospel message and what Jesus did for you. That is everything right there. If you can bring that back to focus, you'll find purpose in your life. You'll find meaning. You'll find hope again. And the fact that 
that I was once dead, but now I'm alive, and that there are all kinds of people around me that desperately need that message of hope right now. He said, that is why I'm living right now. That's why I'm breathing, to give you that gospel message. And I hope that's the message that you'll receive and you'll take with you as we continue to go through this, this time. And, uh, and it'll be just a message of hope and encouragement to you as well. I was once dead, but now I'm alive. Enjoy your day.